From now on, when I think of a story that is impossible to predict where it's going to go, Eden, It's an Endless World is going to be right at the top of that list. This is a senin manga that is extremely dark, intense, brutally realistic, yet at the same time very fantastical and filled with science fiction and religious allegory. The scale of which is whatever the story needs to be at that given moment. Sometimes we are dealing with intimate personal tragedies and trauma, and other times we expand to a global worldwide disaster and what could potentially be the next stage of human evolution, all while asking the question whether or not God is real, and if he is, then why would he subjugate us to such a world of astronomical cruelty where the only way to survive is to kill or to subsist on the life force of something else? Would a loving God truly put us in a world where suffering is inevitable and everything that we think would be beneficial to help us either on an individual level or on a wider scale, eventually is the cause of our spiral into darkness. This manga was also created in the late 90s until the mid-2000s, and yet a lot of the story elements are even more relevant today than they would have been back then. I'm not going to try to spoil much in this review, but I will have to talk about particular elements of the story and events in it just to kind of give you my overall gist. But first of all, the first chapter of this manga is so radically different than the rest of the story. It's basically a setup, a prologue, and yet it does manage to tie back in perfectly by the end of the story, which I think was masterfully done. Because we begin in a world where a <laughs> pandemic has wiped out a small portion of the population, but people are starting to get back on their feet, and humanity is starting to just act as normal again. But the two main characters in the first chapter are kids that seem to have an immunity for the virus. They're being kept safe, but soon things go haywire, and then they're left to fend for themselves within the world. But then by chapter 2, we jump 20 years into the future, and the real protagonist of the story is their son, Elijah. And at first, we are just with Elijah and a robot as he wanders the wastelands of a broken city, leaving me to think that this was going to be some kind of post-apocalyptic manga. Guess what? It's not. There's also a sci-fi element at play, with humans having the technology to give themselves robotic augmentations. So, if you lose an arm sometime in your life, well, you can just replace that with a robot arm, and it's not such a strange occurrence to see. And some people are more augmented than others, and some of which are basically fully battle-equipped androids at this point. However, when Elijah finally makes it to civilization, and it takes a while, the cities and humanity are pretty much living as normally as we do in our real world, the only difference being a slightly more advanced technology. It's just that some parts of the world are more devastated than others. But in the first 20 to 30 chapters, this manga is absolutely insane and lets you know right off the bat that any character at any moment can die. And we are not talking about in some noble way, some noble sacrifice. I mean that there is a constant war going on in the world, and if you are caught in the crossfire, you can die as quickly as one bullet hitting its mark. Elijah gets caught up with a mercenary team and we're introduced to some major players that would come in and out of the story, but are important all the way through. We have Sophia, who is a completely augmented body and has a background that involves, well, let's just say sex with a lot of people and a complete lack of nurturing skills for any of her children, which does come back to haunt her in a big way. And of course, there's the character of Kenji, and Kenji is basically the resident badass of this manga. Skilled and trained purely to kill, and he's extremely good at it. He's got a lot of psychological damage, but damn, he's good at his job. Anytime the characters are going into a dangerous situation, you want... no... You need Kenji with you if you're going to have any chance of making it out alive. But as I said, in the war and combat situations, anyone can die at any moment. It keeps the tension high and it makes the violence feel real. There's a scene in the first story arc that involves a landmine, and I won't go into detail about it because I don't want to spoil anything, but this scene was so unbelievably tragic and dark that it's going to leave an impression on me for a long time, and to me is probably the most memorable part of the manga. I think because it happened so early on and I just truly didn't expect what happened. And with that, you're probably wondering, what is this story actually about? 
Uh, all I can say is that this manga is a look at humanity. That's the best way to put it, because in order to explain the plot, I would have to talk about nearly each individual scene in each individual arc. Because with this story, you kind of have to look at it both on a small and large scale at the same time. For example, the second arc takes Elijah into the city, and he forms a relationship with a prostitute named Helena. And after being taken from a war zone to the city, it gets even worse for him from here on out. This is where the story really gets dark, and I mean really dark. There's this whole complicated situation involving a heroin addict that is so deeply dependent that she even sacrificed her own child in order to continue her drug use that even the man that is desperately in love with her eventually gives in, understanding that he can't save her from her desires, and so he just starts being the man to administer the drugs to her because that's what she wants. And within this situation, Elijah wants to help the best that he can. He wants to get her clean. He wants to do the right thing. But in a tragic domino effect of events, as he tries to help her, the situation gets worse and worse and eventually blows up all the way in their faces and by the end of the arc, Elijah turns into a bit of a monster himself. But what does this mean on a grand scale? Well, there's also this look at humanity as a whole, and this is explained much later in the manga, but it has to do with the fact that the entire planet is just one battlefield for survival, and that we are just one collective whole, all eating and absorbing each other in order to continue living. You know, the lion eats the gazelle, lion dies and nourishes the earth, plants grow, and then gazelle eats those plants. It's the circle of life kind of theme. But for humans to want to escape from the brutality of the unfair nature of the universe, we group together in an effort to help one another in order to make things easier. We create a society with one another. It's something done with the original intention of making things better for everyone, just as Elijah went into helping the drug addict with the best intentions. But on a long enough time scale, by doing that, there will inevitably be inequality. Different races will hate one another, the rich will dominate over the poor, those with the best weapons will subjugate those who can't fight back. And we create religions, which on a surface level is a good way to unite people, but religion is also the driving force for most wars and destruction within humanity. So in essence, the theme of this manga is saying that despite our best efforts, there will always be that next level of violence and disparity, almost like it's inevitable. Whether the intentions are pure or evil, we will eventually divide and hate one another. There are plenty of scenes of the world leaders and higher powers just using their status to control their soldiers and people, letting and watching people die in order to propel their own ideals, basically like players killing the pawns on a chessboard, not viewing us as real people, but just obstacles in their way. It shows children being killed in war. It shows actual genocide that really happened in our real world. It shows war, segregation, racism, and everything in between. And it's not afraid to throw it in your face every time that you think things might be going well, just to remind you of the darkness that is out there. And remember that virus that was mentioned in the very first chapter? Well, subtly, in the background of this manga, every now and then, it goes back to that concept, and we realize that the virus is far from over. In fact, it continues to evolve throughout the entire story. The virus at first began to crystallize people, but soon, those crystallized versions of themselves begin to meld together into the earth, and it starts to expand. Over years, every person that dies of the virus begins to assimilate together until there is a massive city-wide crystal fortress of former human beings. And each person, as they die, all of their thoughts, dreams, memories, all of it gets collected into one. Yeah, we are dealing with that collective consciousness idea, a living entity that is able to use anyone that's died and access their memories and their humanity. All of it continued to build until the explosive final chapters that I will not spoil for you here. But the incredible writing that allows several other stories to happen while slowly expanding on concepts from chapter 1 and then bringing it all full circle by the end was nothing short of impressive. 
there are so many times that I thought the author just had several different ideas that he wanted to do, and so that's why the arcs of this manga are so radically different. But by reading the end and seeing how he pulled it all back together, it, it all makes sense to me now, and it's honestly astounding how he can make such completely different events all kind of flow together within the same story. I've heard next to nobody talk about this manga, and it's a damn shame. I even think this would work extremely well as a live action series if they ever decided to adapt it, and of course an anime as well. But truly keep in mind that this is a dark senin manga. There is a ton of violence, gore, drugs, sex, some sex scenes that only last 9 seconds, it's okay fellas, it happens to all of us, and others that are both intimate and tragic in their own way. Its combat scenes run the gamut from firefights to hand-to-hand -hand combat and sometimes fighting purely machine enemies that make for some truly terrifying ways of attacking people and remind me of the T-1000 from Terminator 2. And if I want to get less serious for a minute, there is a ton of waifu potentials in this manga, Lethia being a top contender for me. I know she's basically all machine, but you know what? I would find a way. Elijah himself works as a great protagonist, but it is very sad to see the way that he delves deeper and deeper into darker tendencies and begins doing things that he vowed never to do after witnessing the deaths of some people that were very close to him. I would say similar to Berserk, the theme of struggling against the hardships of the world are heavily at play here. When it comes to the assimilation, there is definitely a sense that everyone that ultimately succumbs to it just kind of gave up. There's scenes where characters willingly give themselves over to it as if they can't face the harshness of life any longer, and you kind of understand it when they do, and it makes you wonder yourself if all of this is worth struggling through. Maybe there would be peace within that submission. But also many characters do turn the other way and continue on their path where they will eventually face the danger and pain in any way that they can. That humanity might not truly be destined to fail and that if we keep growing and keep pushing forward, maybe we can move past the faults that are always there to destroy us. But I think if you are even into just good action and good sci-fi elements at play, you would have a good time with this manga as well. Just expect the unexpected. Truly, I've never been so caught off guard with every direction that this manga took, and every character growth or character death that happens, I was surprised. I was about five chapters away from its completion, and I was literally sitting there thinking, I have no idea how this manga is going to end. And I like that feeling. I like not being able to predict where a story's going. Also, I don't know how fans feel about the ending. I could see people either loving it or hating it, but you can decide that for yourself. When you go into this manga, you're going to get a look at humanity without any punches pulled. The best and the worst of us is on display, and it won't let you look away. I really did love this story, and if the physical volumes ever become available again, I would definitely pick them up. It's about 18 volumes in total, so it's not a super long series, but it's definitely long enough to keep you invested for a while. If you guys have read Eden, It's an Endless World, please let me know what you think about it in the comments below, and if you haven't, as long as you can handle the darker themes, I truly think you should definitely check this one out. This is one of those manga that after reading it, I now wish many more people would have so that I could talk about it with someone. So, I don't know. Maybe this video will help get the word out about it. I think that this story is more relevant now than it ever was, especially considering our current world situation. Anyways, if you like this review, please give the video a like and a comment to help it in the algorithm. Also, if you haven't yet, consider subscribing to the channel because I do put out consistent anime, manga, movie, and other random ass content on your YouTube feed daily. Also, help me get to that precious 100,000 subscriber goal. Anyways, guys, thank you all for watching this video. I do appreciate it, and I'll talk to you next time.